Our first speaker today is going to be Andy Lakaitis, and he's an environmental systems engineer in the dairy and manure equipment industry for GEA Farm, in uh, Farm Technologies. His responsibilities include technology research, sales support, manure system design, and product development. Andy and his wife, they reside in St. Charles, Illinois. Have they finally gotten rid of the snow? Is it gone? Yeah. Okay, it snows on there, it's good. Uh, it says Western Chicago suburb, and he operates his family 40 cow dairy operation. So with that, Andy, we'll turn it over to you. Thank you. All right, well, I'll try to keep the excitement and, and level up where I need to <laughs> more depth has it here, but well, we'll, we'll do the best we can. Uh, as Jeff mentioned, I'm Andy Lake guys with Kia Farm Technologies. I wanted to kind of give an update of some of the, the field demonstrations and testing we've been doing over the past year <laughs> with the manure separation technology. Obviously, we've all heard of solid liquid manure separation, but we're seeing it more and more interest from the farmers themselves kind of driving the, the need to put more systems on farm and the, the reasons for those systems coming in has changed. We just kind of want to address some of those ideas and what that means for us in the industry. So as we've gone through things the past couple days, what we talk about manure application challenges, there's, there's obviously things that, that we need to address as equipment providers, as solutions providers to dairymen and livestock producers. Uh, we, we talked about it again and again, nutrient limitations. We always talk about build up on fields close to farms. You know, we run a little small dairy farm at home and we know it's easiest to spread manure on the field that's right next to the manure pit. Just makes things go a lot quicker, uh, moves things along really easy. But it's not always the best way for distrib distributing your nutrients throughout the farm. <coughs> a big thing that's come up in recent years and there's been some equipment designed and, and sold to address this is, is lagoon agitation. As, the, as farms get larger and larger, as they're more concentrated in one area, the lagoons and the pits get larger and larger and it's very difficult to effectively agitate that entire pit to get those nutrients stirred up and homogenized to get them on the fields in a proper way. And then of course efficiency. We know our, our time window is getting shorter and shorter. Our availability of labor is getting less and less. The, the time and, and areas that we can put manure on in the fields is, is really a limiting factor now. So producers are looking to drive that efficiency up, drive the fuse, fuel usage down and figure out ways where they can put more gallons on per hour or more gallons per man hour to really get the most effective use of their labor equipment while getting nutrients on the field. So step up to the nutrient management process, what we see on the farm, we have some sort of livestock production barn, some facility, we go through a transfer step, collect the manure, transfer it, then we either go into a digester or a primary solid separation. Again, nothing, nothing that's really groundbreaking, but we're seeing more and more people going through that, that primary separation step to pull out and separate nutrients. Uh, one of the primary uses is for bedding, especially in the dairy market. And then that bedding can go to compost or fertilizer or whatever, whatever we need to do. I, I'm an engineer, so I kind of have to have a process flowchart somewhere in my presentation, so just bear with me and I'll, I'll get through it here. The next step we see is that a lot of producers are now looking at a secondary separation step. So they're taking that liquid from their primary, going through an additional either mechanical, biological, chemical process to, to separate more liquids from solids to get that further nutrient reduction. Again, solids go to the same uh, solid stream and then liquids either go to the lagoon and then we agitate, transfer it and get it on the fields. We've seen a few presentations the last two days about further steps, taking this uh, additional steps further to get, to get more nutrient partitioning, uh, portable or potable drinking water and using that either to discharge or use back on the farm uh, as drinking water for the animals. And I think that's a step we're going towards, but we have to remember we have to do the intermediate steps first. So really, I just want to focus on the kind of the secondary separation step after a primary and kind of understand where we're coming from as the industry and <coughs> so we can get to those future steps down the road. The separation systems for primary bedding, or primary separation, we, we say this is the, the first screen or the first line of defense. Most guys are using a primary separation for bedding production, uh, fiber manure bedding on the farm, or just to clean up liquid for flush, flushing. So if they're cleaning up liquid for a flush flume to clean the barn, they need that liquid as processed liquid on the farm to move manure around. Those of you not familiar with green bedding, it's a fiber bedding. It's been getting more and more popular in, this, in the industry as bedding sources such as straw, sawdust, are more difficult to obtain. And as farmers truly understand that the true cost of sand from a material handling, from a storage, from an application standpoint, this seems to be a very viable option. The farms are making it work very well. As you can see in, in this picture here, you know, this cow is on a, a nice clean bedded stall. And what we'd really like to see is when cows are up at the feed bunk, you don't see any, any, any uh, manure on their hocks, any manure on their flanks, they're clean cows. But this doesn't happen just from the bedding itself. It, it's more of a management uh, step. We need the producer, the, the herdsmen, the guys that are in the stalls cleaning them, 
to really be in line and really make this system work together. They really need to manage those stalls properly. So when the cows are out getting milk, they need to go through, clean the manure out of those stalls, groom those stalls properly so we get drainage, so we make a nice comfy stall for the animal. When we look at, at primary separation, um, we, we've kind of noticed a shift. When, when we first looked at primary separators going onto a farm, everyone really cared about capture rate. How much solids are you capturing? What percentage are you getting out? What's the percentage of dry matter coming off? And what we've learned with doing these stage separation systems with a primary and secondary is we're willing to sacrifice our primary separation efficiency to get this quality bedding out of it. So these three farms here, they're, they're all using manure fiber as bedding. So using those green solids, no digestion. And you can see we have a, a really widely variable uh, total solids capture rate, anywhere 20% to 55%. And there's some other factors that go into it. Uh, the, obviously, the, the total solids and the influent are going to greatly affect the capture rate. But overall, these farms are making a nice green bedding product, and they're really happy with the results. What's also noticed to point out is that these primary steps, they really have widely variable nutrient capture rates. Uh, one, one farm just had a 5% nutrient uh, phosphorus rate in their solids, was another farm was capturing 37% phosphorus, which for a primary step is, is really great. I don't know how they're getting so much of the the small particles out to catch that much phosphorus, but they were doing it. But when we look at, at capture rates and the type of equipment to, to make green manure bedding or make this primary separated solid, th this is a picture I took while doing a test at a dairy in Wisconsin. We were doing a, a roller press demonstration compared to a screw press separation. And so the one on, the, on your left is from a roller press, the one on the right is from a screw press. The difference is, it's the same manure, same process, same farm, but the difference, you can clearly see a color difference between the two materials, even though it's the same exact input material, but the one on the right from the screw press does have a higher capture rate. But if you're looking at what makes a quality bedding material, we really want the one on the left. Larger particle size, a little more fluffiness, a little more elasticity from that material when the cow lays down. Dry matter, they, they probably test very similar. I think when you go and feel the material and what sticks to your hand and what's eventually going to stick to the cow's teeth, to the udder, and to the, the flanks, the one on the right seems to be a lot better. It's a little larger fiber, so it tends to fall off. It doesn't really stick to the cow as she goes into the parlor and create further steps in the milking procedure. So when we look at introducing a secondary separation, because we want to make this bedding product, but we also want to reduce nutrients before we send them out to the lagoon. The secondary separation step this is a farm in Indiana, about an 1800 cow dairy, put in a, a primary bedding separator and then a secondary separator just to pull some solids out. So the primary step, we're pulling off this nice fluffy fiber that comes out first. That drops down, that's what they use for bedding. And then we run it over the same equipment, just a little different setup as a secondary step, just to pull out some more solids to get it out of the system before it goes to the gym. And they're really happy doing this two-stage system. It's simple equipment. It's very similar to what's doing the, the primary stage and they can make the system work for their farm. So when we look at secondary separation, uh, we really have kind of two goals. One, we want to try to partition, partition nutrients. So if we can separate some phosphorus, separate some nitrogen, separate the, the potassium into the solid portion, that makes the manure handling a little easier. But importantly, we also want to reduce solids going to long-term storage. We know that that's a, kind of a challenge later on in the system. And when we look at following a primary separation system, maybe a more efficient separator to make that bedding with some sort of secondary system, there's a couple of advantages that come in. Uh, one is a, a slightly increased capacity for the, the secondary system. If we're pulling out all the big solids, the big fiber with that primary separator, we generally reduce the, the total volume we have to handle by about 10%. So that means we can downsize our secondary separator slightly or run a little slower to get a little better efficiency. Um, and most important, and we all live in reality on dairy farms, we know what gets dropped on the floor, what gets dropped in the manure system, what we find in the pit, is that primary screen acts as a really good trash filter. You know, we can put in bar screens, we can put in different sedimentation pits, but if we go from the primary separator directly into the secondary, we know if it makes it through the primary, it's, it's gonna go through the secondary. So that primary separator, we, we tend to use a lower technology piece of equipment, something that can handle the trash, handle the solids, and get it out of the, the liquid stream so we can process that liquid stream kind of fear-free in a way. We don't have those rocks and as much sediment or grit in that liquid stream. This is a lagoon in, in Idaho at a dairy with a digester that had primary separation. They're used to pulling everything off the bedding. Their liquids are going into this lagoon. It, it, it's a big lagoon. They couldn't deep, dig 
very far down, but it's also like a 10 or 12,000 cow dairy, so they need to have a lot of storage space. If you zoom in and look at this picture, they're driving equipment through about two or three feet of just sludge at the bottom of the pit. And this, it, we, we all know as designers and engineers, we're going to have this uh, sludge build up at the bottom of the lagoon, but as a dairyman and as a manure handling, uh, people that handle manure, how do, they, how do they deal with it? There's only certain ways they can do it. And there, there's a huge cost associated with that. To get that equipment into the pit, to get it lined up, to run those motors, to run, use that horsepower, and you're not always going to get all those nutrients out. And if you're pulling this out later on as a thick sludge, now you have all these nutrients concentrated, it takes a lot more planning from a nutrient standpoint to put those nutrients on the field. One example of a secondary separator, this is just using a slope screen or a side hill, whatever technology or whatever company you want to use it, it's a very just a, an incline screen. Works well for years, simple technology, something the farm can easily maintain, something they're familiar with, something they can troubleshoot and keep it going. So they have an existing primary separation system. This is a flush dairy, so they, they have to process everything right away in their flush pit to get enough liquid to, to fl flush the dairy. Then they go to a, a processing flush pit. So the liquid from the primary separators goes into this pit. The top liquid is then used to flush back to the dairy. The liquid at the bottom, there's a pump that sucks from the bottom of the pit to try to get whatever viscous material, whatever solids are going to settle out quickly to the bottom. And that's what's processed over another screen before it goes to the final storage. So there's a secondary screen there. Just a shot of the screen. As, as I mentioned, it's something the farm is already familiar with. And we can change the screen size to kind of tailor from a primary screen to a secondary screen. What we're learning is as, these, as farms kind of use these systems, they actually want to open their screen sizes up on the primary screen, on, on the primary separator, to get more flow across it, to get, get the volume flow rate they need to keep the dairy going. And then they can tighten the screen up on the secondary separator because they can run that machine slower. They can process 24 hours a day to kind of keep that system at optimal running time so they can get the most capture rate out of that, that system. What we saw at this dairy was about 30% capture rates, but overall we were still only getting less than 10% of the nutrients. Really not a very significant uh, PC equipment for nutrient separation. So our next step was to introduce a centrifuge separation technology. Uh, there's several manufacturers out there. We were fortunate to have one within our own GIA group, kind of a sister company to us. Uh, if you're not familiar with centrifuge separation, essentially we're just trying to separate the northern and the solids liquids from solids using gravity. So if there's any sort of weight difference in the, in the particle of manure versus the water, we're gonna, gonna really um, hammer in on that difference and try to spread those solids to the outside of the, screen, outside of the bowl and auger those solids away. So we took a centrifuge, uh, we kind of did a, a summer road tour, so to speak. I spent about two weeks in Iowa, I went down to Colorado and Utah and Washington and Texas. And when we took the centrifuge around, just tried it in different types of manure. Our goal is, we know the technology works in the right applications. We wanted to find out what were those applications. We know it can really get good separation with, with, fought with uh, polymer and other, other ad additives, but what is it, how does it work without those extra costs? How can we make this cost effective to dairymen? So this setup, we went through and we did a primary separation. Then we pulled the liquid after those primary separators, ran it through the centrifuge. In here you can see the, the centrate coming out. So this is the spun at three to 4,000 uh, times the force of gravity to get those, get the liquid out. And then we have a, a solid cake that comes out the other side. What's nice about this, this equipment, it is high technology. It is precision machined. Just like any centrifuge out there, it's very high speeds. So you have to be very close tolerance. It's a very well balanced. But it's something the farmer's familiar with. It's not uh, an acid system. It's not a biological process. It's something they can work on. It's something they can understand. It's something their current skill set can easily maintain and work. And then when they do need someone to come work on it, there's, it, it's a lot easier to get done as opposed to trying to address something you don't completely understand. So results from some of those tests, this, this result is from that dairy or the video I just showed you. This is a flush dairy in Idaho, no digester, primary bedding separation. So we were coming in about 4.3% dry matter, leaving in about 2.6. So a, a pretty good, about a 45% reduction in, in total solid content. And what they were looking for was to get phosphorus separation. So they're getting about a 35% reduction using this system. So from the secondary system, you get 35% of your phosphorus out. From the primary system, you get about another 5 to 10. So overall, about a 40 to 45% reduction of phosphorus. 
But what, what really interested this dairy was that this was without any polymer, without any chemicals. It was just straight mechanical, uh, mechanical force doing the separation. Another dairy we went to in Idaho, using uh, they, they do have a digester in place. So we went there, again, pulled after the primary separator, so they're pulling their bedding out. We went in, pulled that liquid, ran it through the, the centrifuge. They came up quite a little bit lower in total dry matter. They're coming in at 4.4, and it was leaving at 1.9% dry matter in, in, the, in the centrate. So they're really happy with that, because when you take that centrate, you dump it out over a white piece of paper or a pipe, you really don't see any, any solids left in there. So they are more excited not to have to worry about cleaning that lagoon out as, as much every year because they, since the solids weren't going to the lagoon, they weren't gonna have to settle them out and separate them out and put them on the land later on. And they, we actually saw a little bit better uh, total phosphorus capture rate, about 55%. So they were really happy with those results. And again, we could add some polymer and add some chemistry and, and dial those results up as the farm needed. So overall, as a general rule of thumb, kind of with the testing we did, we saw about 25% capture rate of organic nitrogen and about 50% 50, 50 of phosphorus without any chemicals or polymer. If we went ahead and added polymer to try to capture as much as we could, we, up, we almost doubled both of those numbers, about 50% of the nitrogen and about 95% of, of the phosphorus. Some of the variability that, that came into the system is obviously the type of material we're feeding to a centrifuge or, or secondary slope screen. Uh, the tuning of the equipment, you know, how well we, we set the torque, the differential speed between the scroll and the auger, and really what our, what our total G-force was trying to pull that material apart. Overall, uh, we, we did see a high solids capture rate as we go through, I could go through some of the other different tests, but we saw about a 50% solids capture rate with the centrifuge with, with no polymer or chemical. This really meant a lot to the dairymen because they, they saw cleaner water for irrigation, really less chances of plugging any nozzles, less chances of having any sedimented, sedimentation issues in their irrigation system, as well as a reduced need to agitate and clean from their lagoon. Uh, overall, the dry, dry matter averaged about 30%. They didn't really care what the number was from the secondary separation. They just wanted something they could handle in a truck, handle with a, a bucket, and it wouldn't be leaking or, or juicing off as they're hauling down the road. Some economic factors, if you look at applying with, with a manure tanker versus a drag hose, I usually use a number of about one cent per penny to haul with a manure tank, and about a tenth of a cent per penny to haul with a irrigation system. So if you have about a 500 cow dairy, you have the potential to save about $40,000 per year, which helps pay for some of the equipment uh, as a direct, uh, immediate cost. And as everyone says, they want to milk more cows at home. You know, it's never an issue of not Everyone says they don't have enough land, but sometimes we, we do have a, a few too many cows at home. But this will help you concentrate your nutrients and, and send that manure further away. Again, some of the non or indirect economic factors. Uh, lagoon agitation, as I mentioned, that's a big one. You don't have to bring the two, 300 horsepower machines in to agitate the lagoon. That saves you quite a bit of time. Compaction in the field if you're not running a, a drag hose or a tank. And maybe some better timing of nutrient application to put it on the growing crop. And some nutrient use efficiency, if, if we can limit phosphorus buildup in the soil and use that on soils that need it, we can save some cost per acre there as well. So overall, uh, the, the reason we went and did this testing, the reason we went and kind of went out and proved what we, we kind of knew but just put it out on farms, was the, the increased interest in this stage separation. This isn't something we're out there trying to promote, it's something the dairymen are coming to us going, how can I do more? How can I separate the nutrients out a little better? How can I use the equipment I have already and add on to my system? So most of them saw the need to produce a bedding solids. So they wanted to get that long fiber. And then they wanted to have some sort of stage system so they could, as the dairy grew, as money came in the bank account, they could add on to the system accordingly to put in what they wanted. And the thing we have to remember about all these separation systems or nutrient partitioning is it needs to be integrated with the farm system. We don't want to have, need to have someone there that needs to have a special degree to run the system and has to work on a farm which has to work every day in all sorts of conditions. And if it's gonna go wrong, it's gonna go wrong on a, on a dairy farm. So again, we, we like the centrifuge because it's a mechanical process and we can add in some redundancy and overflow pass in case of emergencies. And overall, I think we have a significant potential for nutrient reduction. With the equipment that we saw, with the, the excitement of the dairymen, with the kind of ease of operation, I think this is something that could be very widely accepted, very easily accepted. And that's really gonna help us getting those nutrients moved around off the farm to fields that really need it. So with that, I'll uh, take any questions and, and go from there. Okay, you have a question. We've got about one minute left. 
And we'll question. Yes. What was the moisture content? What was your moisture content after the centrifuge of the dry material you were pulling out? It, it varied between 28 to 34 percent, but we, we can kind of dial that in with how much torque and the speed we put on the on the um, scroll in the bowl. But about 30 percent is what we we saw typically. All right, let's give him a hand.